So today, we're gonna to talk about the five website mistakes that could be hurting your business right now. And if you're a designer, these mistakes are so essential for you to focus on when you're designing sites. So please stay tuned, hit that like button and let's go. Hi guys, my name is Leif Wallace and welcome to Wallace TV. On this channel, I share advice, tools and motivation to help you to become a better designer. And if there's any small businesses or entrepreneurs out there that's wanting to know some key skills to improve, then this is the channel for you. So today, I wanna to really break down what are some top five website mistakes that hurt multiple different businesses. And if you stay till the end, I'm also gonna share a bonus tip with you that so many people do not pay attention to, but it's super essential, so please, Stay tuned and wait to the end. I've got a bonus tip for you coming up. Step number one is not having a clear call to action. You see so many businesses, when you land on their website, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to click on the blog? Do you want me to click on your service page? Do you want me to go to uh, you know, your about page or your contact page or your you know, learn about us page? Whatever it may be. Listen, when somebody lands on your website, make sure there's a clear call to action. And this is why for so many, especially service-based businesses out there, and even for you selling products or service, products that you really want to get into customers' hands, having a very defined action on a page is easy. You see, when there's too much choice, what happens is users have what is called choice paralysis. So you want to navigate those choices, make sure it's clear. Two, maybe one, maybe two, three choices if necessary, but one choice is always the ideal. Focus on that one choice. When they land on this page, you want to ask, what do I want people to do when they land on this page? Even well-designed blogs have very clear call to actions. And this is why it's super, super essential to make sure whenever you're designing your website, specifically when you're designing a service-based website as well, you make sure that action is clear. Book a phone call sign up for this free consultation, you know, um, send us your contact details, whatever it may be, make sure the action, you know, sign up for this free trial, you know, um, uh, you know, 30 days free, sign up here. Whatever the action is that you want them to take, make sure it's super clear and easy to be found. The next thing I wanna talk about is not having clear contact links. You know, recently, because everybody's been at home and the pandemic has got us in our homes, you know, we wanna to go to websites and contact people, you know, you know, you might want to contact your bank or recently I was on Santander's bank, <laughs> you know, and this is no disrespect to the designers working on the Santander website. And I'm a customer of Santander. And when I went to their login page, uh, it basically said, oh, go to this home page, sign in and you should get a notification on your phone. For some reason, the app, I updated the app and I wasn't getting a notification on my app when I wanted to sign in because it had this two factor authentication. So what happened was, is that you had to get a passcode that would be text to your mobile phone, but that passcode was hidden under a learn more button. And then it opened a second screen where you could find the code, but it wasn't really clear. And I'm actually a designer. And if I was struggling to find this, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So I called the company up saying, look, I can't log in. When I spoke to the customer service representative, they said to me directly that, oh my gosh, you won't be surprised at the amount of people that call in to say they are having the same problem. Now, you see, you could actually save your company so much money if they just moved a simple contact form or even in their sign up process, a simple um, step if you moved it to the front page and you made the steps for the user to take next, super, super clear. How do you want them to contact even when they're logging in? Make sure when they're logging in, it's super clear. If there's two-factor authentication and the code needs to be sent to their phone, make sure it's clear and you articulate to the user what will happen next. You see, nobody likes to go searching to do a basic, basic, basic interaction. People don't want to be searching to find out how to go to the next step. Make things easy for users when they are on your site. The third thing I want to talk about is not using video enough. And this is uh, not me saying to use more video. This is talking about how you can effectively use video. And I would even adding motion graphics, animations, <coughs> uh, uh, motion graphics and animations as well. Uh, when people land on your page, because we are so uh, overloaded with online and for online, we're on websites all the time, uh, a website that can articulate sometimes with less text but with a graphic can sometimes be just as more influential and impactful rather than using more text. Now, to be fair, copy is effective because copy helps you for search engine reasons. And I'll talk about that later on. But when you can use motion graphics, when you can use video to articulate your product or service or more about the benefits and features of your product or service, this is super, super great 
for you to do. So think about how you can use motion graphics, how you can use animations to articulate the features, benefits about your products and service. And if you can have a short two to three minute video that summarizes what users will get, who you are, and what's the next step you want them to take, that will be really beneficial for you as well. The fourth thing I wanna talk about, the fourth thing is super key. This is about slow loading speeds. Now, this is really, really essential. This is about having like heavy graphics on the page. This is about having maybe too much text, but too much real heavy, dense um, you know, videos as well as graphical images. And there's ways that you can cut things down. There's a website called Tiny PNG that helps you smush on WordPress. There's a plugin called WP Smush that helps to shrink the size of your images. And there's multiple tools out there that you can use. One great tool that I like is what we call PageSpeed Insights by Google, PageSpeed, in PageSpeed Insights by Google. I'll make sure I put the link in the, in the description below. But this tool allows you to basically actually test the speed, the loading speed of your website and gives you some information to say where there's errors in your code, where there's too many heavy files and what steps that you can take to improve that. So definitely run your website, you know, once you've got it built or maybe your site is actually running, you know, go to uh, PageSpeed Insights and look at what is happening in uh, when your page is loading and what tips you can use to improve the speed of loading times as well. My fifth point I wanna talk about is not using the power of SEO. What do I mean? Search engine optimization. This is leveraging keywords that you should be found for. This is leveraging really good content marketing strategies that allow your websites to rank higher in Google search engine. You see, one of the key things that so many people don't really understand when it comes into building your website, when you think about your website, you wanna think about a long-term strategy for your website. And content marketing is a great way to allow you to rank and search for key terms especially for local businesses to a certain area. You can rank for key terms local to your city, to your location, based upon the actual product or service you provide. So it could be like um, you live in a small town in Abbeywood or you live in a small town in Battersea and you can say Battersea hairdresser or Battersea salon or Battersea barber, whatever it may be, you can leverage these keywords on your site through content marketing strategies to really allow your site to rank faster in Google. And another thing with Google, make sure you use Google's business tool because when you sign up for Google business, that also helps you to rank higher as well. And you can actually place content, content in Google business's platform as well that helps you to rank higher in Google also. So leverage tools like Google, Google business, but specifically search engine marketing tools on Google tools on Google from your website using content marketing through blogging, especially through blogging and really having solid copy to explain your products and service using the keywords that you want to be found for. This is super essential to be ranked higher in Google as well. And the, my bonus point for those of you who stay to the end, thank you so much, is a very practical and basic thing. It, all it is, is my sixth point or my bonus point is use more testimonials and reviews. You see, Big Commerce did a study where they found out that customers are 80 to 90% more likely to purchase from you when you use more testimonials and reviews. So it's so essential and I believe in using video as much as possible. If you can't use video, use text or screenshots of, you know, things people have said by you, to, to you by text, screenshots of um, things in Instagram DMs, put them on your site. You'll be so surprised, like the validity of those um, screenshots can even be more effective than just having text that you may copy from a WhatsApp post into uh, uh, some text that looks nice on your site, but people may think, oh, anybody could write that. So one of the key things I like to do is just screenshot and it might feel a little bit not as refined to have these screenshots on your site, but it adds a level of validity to what people are saying about your products and service because you have real screenshots from real customers or you have real video from real customers. You see, people trust the social proof from others. So you wanna make sure that you leverage that to help you going forward. So my question of the day is what is the number one mistake I've mentioned today that you are going to work on? Is it, you know, the five things I mentioned is not having a clear call to action, not using solid contact links, not using video and animation graphics enough. Uh, it's, I spoke about slow loading speeds on your website. I spoke about not using SEO enough to make sure that you can rank higher in Google. And the last point I mentioned, my bonus point was about not using enough testimonials and reviews. 
So my question of the day is what mistake are you gonna focus on improving right now? Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd love to know more, I'll send some more details and articles in the description box. So please look in there right now. Also look out in the description box below. I have a short high converting funnel mini course to really help you improve your website and your web design. So let me know how you think about it and just click on the link below and just sign up to my you know short mini course. I really think it will help you today. So I wanna thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like, hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and remember you can improve your life through creative advice. Look after yourself and look after your families. Take care and goodbye.